Indianapolis, once the epicenter of manufacturing in America, is at a crossroads in its development as an emerging U.S. city. With globalization, advancing technology, and lack of sufficient job skills training, many manufacturing jobs are going away as the demand for skilled laborers grows at the most rapid rate in American history, putting much of the middle class at risk of slipping into poverty. At the same time, Indianapolis is proving enticing to startups, corporations, and emerging talent due to the region's affordability and rapid commercial development that has led to a vibrant downtown scene. The city now faces one of its biggest challenges. Will Indianapolis continue to displace its middle class as tech industry virgins, or can it find a way to sustain its local workforce while keeping up with its 21st century aspirations? I do believe that I'm a part of the middle class. My question would be, how do you define middle class? Is middle class where you live? Is middle class what you make? Is middle class how you live? Where I live is considered a middle class neighborhood. But honestly, where we are income wise, we're one catastrophic event away from lower class. We're one catastrophic event away from having a home to not having a home. Are we really middle class? If the middle class disappeared, we would all go into somewhat of a free fall. For our capital city to be so reliant, so dependent, on these jobs to move our state forward, it's only fueled by the middle class. We've got to skill up and we can't be content. We don't want anyone to be left behind. There is no technical definition of the middle class, but 95% of people believe they're in the middle class, whether they are or not. People in the middle class tend to be able to afford a house, depending where they are, tend to have two cars if it's a two-parent family, tend to have health care and education. The cost of that stuff is going up, and incomes are barely keeping pace. In essence, the biggest challenge facing the middle class is to stay in the middle class. One day, I got a phone call from one of my coworkers. He says, they're closing operations, they're moving the company to Mexico. I was in that group of people that were going to be laid off. I was sad, I was angry. I felt abandoned, didn't know what I was gonna do, didn't know why this was happening. My dream job was gonna become a nightmare overnight. Whenever you get into these periods where there's a lot of change in the economy, you're definitely gonna have people that got stranded or they started on one thing thinking that that industry is going to sustain itself, then the whole thing comes apart. Those are the hardest cases to face. When I went to school to get my MBA, my goal was to be making between 75 and 100,000. But I didn't realize I would have to leave my community I could be doing a lot of what I do without a master's degree. Not to say that a master's degree doesn't matter, but in this city, an associate's degree and a certification would have been fine. I didn't understand that market when I started. I came to Indianapolis when I was about 13 years old. Me, my mother, my grandmother, we moved to Indianapolis in search of basically a better life. When we first moved here, we were actually living in a hotel for the first six months. Going from being government assistants, living in a hotel to where I am now, things have changed a lot. My mom was working at Carrier, and I did want a job at Carrier because I heard so many good things about them. I wanted to have the same success that she had. She was able to provide for me and my grandmother as well. A happy home. I was able to go to school, have clean new clothes on my back. <laughs> so getting a job there was just like a dream. 
just in my lifetime, you could not get a high school diploma and go get a nice factory job and live in the middle class for all of your life. You can't do that anymore. And there's a different skill set that's required to survive in this economy. What your grandfather did before is not necessarily what you're going to be able to do for your life. People really need to realize that. My parents moved here to Indianapolis when I was about two. I didn't grow up middle class. We grew up struggling. We started in Martindale Brightwood, the very rough neighborhood. We were living in a very small apartment. And then my mom and dad divorced. With my mom being a single mom and with me being a latchkey kid, it was tough. I had my first child when I was 17. I had another child at 19. And then when I was 21, I ended up getting married and had three more children. Statistics for me said that I would end up on welfare and those sorts of things because I got pregnant in high school. And truly, those things happened. I ended up being homeless with my children. I ended up being on welfare. I ended up being on food stamps. I didn't like the feeling. And so I said, in order for me to change it for me and break the cycle for my children, I had to educate myself. So that's what I did. From 2006 to 2014, I had earned my associates, my bachelor's, and then my master's degree. What I originally wanted to do was consulting for corporate America. What I ended up doing is writing a program for young women with children to get off welfare. That is how I ended up where I am today, working for the Edna Martin Christian Center. What you do today affects what happens for you in the days to come. Our goal is to work with individuals who are the least, the lost, the left out. And we become a beacon of light for those who feel like there is none. The work at Edna Martin Christian Center is important to me because I've been there I've walked a lot of the path that our participants have walked, and I know what it takes to get from step one to step two to step three. Although that is not what I started out doing, but I believe it's just really what I've been purposed to do. Before my job at Carrier, I would say I was living a lower class life. I worked at Taco Bell, I worked at Pizza Hut. It was a time where I had three jobs. It was very mentally and physically exhausting, and I always wanted better. For me, to be in the middle class means being able to afford some of the luxuries in life, but not all of them. It's the equivalent of, okay, you can get this car, but you're gonna struggle when you get it. Working at Carrier, I was able to afford my dream car, and when I had the opportunity to get one, I did. My interest in cars has a lot to do with my interest in technology. By the time my layout time came for Carrier, I had two options. I could sit on my butt and cry about it, or I could do something about it. I chose to do something about it. I decided to go over to Ivy Tech, and I enrolled in electrical engineering technology. What's on the line now versus them is my livelihood. This is what I'm putting all of my eggs into. One of the things that Indianapolis and Indiana in general are doing is the idea that the state has come alongside the educational partners, in particular colleges like Ivy Tech, to say, here's the training that's really needed and that will help people pay for. It's making a big impact on attracting people to um, industry where employees are really needed and they're great jobs, and it will lead them to a great future. My first day of school, after being laid off from care was very exciting. The thing that I personally missed in high school is that when you're in school, you're with the future leaders of the world. You're not just getting a degree, you're becoming a part of your community. Electrical engineering, it's a part of everything, whether it's your phone, your computer, your television. An engineer has made that from an electrical circuit. I could literally put this degree towards helping me get a job in any profession. We're working with 
so many components of the workforce to hear from them where they think their workforce needs are gonna be. And we know that it's less and less about gaining a four-year degree and more and more about obtaining certifications or associate degrees. So going out and spending $100,000 to get an education that's gonna pay you at minimum wage is not a good idea. Sometimes people follow their heart and they know it might take them a little longer to pay off a debt, but ultimately it's worth it for them. I never thought that I would be here at this age with no retirement, with no health insurance, a small pot of life insurance. And I've worked for 11 years in an arena where it's virtually impossible to get ahead. So I believe I am in the middle class, but I'm in an uncomfortable middle class situation. I've been courted by different companies at about 125 or 135, but that means disconnecting from my community and going to corporate America and maybe not doing so much meaningful work in my life. Earning my MBA put me in debt. I have barely increased my income by $10,000, but I've increased my debt by $100,000. Not a good trade-off. Nobody goes to school to get a degree to be poor. But because of our heart and because we love what we do and we love helping people, we kind of stay stuck. Having the opportunity to share and invest in people, invest in my community, invest in my neighborhood, invest in this city, is an awesome, awesome task and opportunity. And I believe that's what I've been purposed and destined to do. We're redefining the whole pathway to success. And that means redefining what higher education is all about. That means making sure that when folks graduate from high school, they're both enrollable and or employable. There are so many people just like yourself who maybe fear the unknown, Maybe fear getting out of your comfort zone. Maybe fear chasing your dream. I'm here to tell you, fear not. I see it happen every day where people say, this has made all the difference in the world. I wish I would have done it two years ago or five years ago, but now I get to determine my destiny only because they have the skill sets to do that. I've recently graduated with my associate degree in electrical engineering technology, and I'm very excited to say that I graduated with honors. I'm actually interning at Armco. They are electrical contractors. What I'm doing is future-proof, potentially, because no one can take my knowledge away from me. My girlfriend's kids are a big part of my life as much as they are of hers. I hope to teach them that it's not just going to school, it's going to school with a purpose. And don't accept less. Receive the nourishment of our bodies for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. The American dream for me is not having that overhead of, I have to go to work. Uh, I have to have a job. The American dream for me is wanting to do what I do. I want to go to work. Having the freedom to do what you want when you want, that's the American dream to me. Do I feel like I'm going to make it? Most definitely. Failure isn't an option for me. Hey, hey, what I'm going to do. The American dream to me means living a full life. I feel like I'm living the American dream because of the people that are around me. I have a full life because of the choices that I make. Amen. I have a full life because my legacy that I'm leaving, my children, my grandchildren, that's, to me, the American dream. It doesn't matter where you start or where you come from. It matters how you finish. And if my life can be that story, if my life can be that beacon of hope for you, my job is done.